<laughs> and welcome back to Cibolo Creek Conversations. My name is Wyatt Marshant, and I'm here with Mr. Paul Wilson. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? Doing all right. Did you push the record button? I did. Oh. It's going there, and the cameras are going. We have new cameras, so now you can see my really poorly done mustache. <laughs> is that new? Yes. Yeah? It's because, well, I had just the beard, right. and it looked Amish. And, I, I did uh, get a few comments to that nature, Amish or terrorist-like. Goodness gracious, <laughs> especially now. Poorly timed, Paul. <laughs> Come on. What the? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I sported just the beard for my first ever sermon. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that was fun. That was a statement. Um, <clears throat> does it grow in pretty quick for you? The beard does. The oh. mustache so what I had to do with the beard, because I had I had spots that didn't grow very well, right. I should have let it go yeah. and just deal with looking ridiculous for a little, a little while. And it eventually filled in. And um, it, 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 it did. And so I'm, I'm hoping the mustache does the same thing. Yeah. But for now, I just look bad. <laughs> well. My just, wife says it looks better, but to be honest with you, I don't believe her. Time. I've never been a real good beard mustache grower i had one this summer for my sabbatical I saw that. And you didn't even look like you took a little while to grow in and it was almost all white <laughs> when i was younger it'd come in red huh. but it was real spotty so i just never got onto that train yeah then my oldest son he can grow a beard or he can grow a mustache in like 36 hours i mean it's amazing and i'm talking big stash um does he sport funny. just the stash by itself? Yeah, every every once in a while. That's a decision. And then he decides he doesn't want it and cuts it off, and three days later he'll grow another one. It's you know what they say about guys that just have the mustache, right? No. Yeah, well, so there's this thing. So you either are in the military, and you can do it. If you have a mustache. Because it's like the Top Gun look. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like just the mustache. Yeah. Outside of that, <clears throat> for some reason, there's a weird correlation between only mustaches and pedophiles <laughs> wow and so but he looks like every time somebody just has the 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 mustache he's like no i don't really want to look like a pedophile <laughs> I, I i didn't know that wow yeah maybe i'll communicate that to him i'm sure he's aware but it's it's culturally acceptable now oh yeah it used to what, be that to be way. a pedophile or to both i guess <laughs> <laughs> it depends on where you're at. And we're starting off strong today. We are. It's not even anything to do with our topic. <laughs> no, nothing. In fact, just the opposite. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So but, we didn't record last week. Mm -mm. I always find that the weeks we don't record, is just kind of different. I kind of yeah. miss getting together and same having conversations. Yeah, because I feel like what. Well, because I'm not in the office very much. And so if we don't record and we don't have lunch, I feel like I just haven't talked to you in like yeah, long time. <laughs> a long time. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, not the best, but, but yeah, so we record today and then if we do the same as last year, we'll go on a hiatus during the months the, of, uh, months of uh, November, you know, <laughs> November and December. Yeah. I, as far as recording goes and you want to get some like in the actual, you know, backlog, I'm down to do that. I'm recording with um, Tom and Rick next week. Uh, oh, yeah. to just talk about um, prison ministry. Okay. So there's another topic I wanted to do, but they wanted a little bit more time to study up on it. Um, yeah. And it's one I think you and I would be very good to talk about too, but it's a little bit touchier, some some say. Yeah. You know, I was, I don't know if you want me to announce this on the air, but um, I, was, I was thinking the other day, maybe it'd be a good person to have on is uh, Jared. Mm-hmm. Jared's sharp, sharp thinker. Yeah. And um, he's our new senior high student pastor. And uh, uh, he's come out with some pretty uh, interesting insights and mm -hmm. really well thought through kind of logic about a couple of things in staff meetings and other meetings I've been in. So he might make a good guest on the podcast sometime. Yeah, absolutely. And especially how that, you know, whatever topic we discuss, but how that goes over into student ministry and yeah. all that mess. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. I also want to talk about um maybe you and I can do it before I do it with Tom and Rick. But I also want to talk about if if uh, and I think we've touched on this before and I so I think I know your position, but are there sins that God sees as being more serious than others? 
And so um, that would be something I'd really like to tackle. Um, but, but yeah. Probably no end to topics. Nope. Nope. Thinking up, thinking up topics sometimes because, you know, a lot of times it's just me. It can be that way. But for the people listening, please send them in. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I wish we knew a, a way to sort of encourage that more if we have an audience that's listening and they have a topic that they're interested in. I mean, send us an email or however yeah. they can get in touch with us. I've been guess. trying to be better at putting the email in, like, you know, the description of whether it's on podcast platforms or on YouTube. Yeah. And so. Because, I mean, I love our conversations and topics that you come up with, but I'm always really sensitive to other things that people who are listening are interested in and would like to hear and yeah. conversation about. And just to know that we're being helpful and beneficial to them would mean a lot. Yeah, well, I think people understanding, too, that, like, this, uh, <clears throat> I guess, platform, us having this uh, this podcast is really just like a year-long extended place for people to ask their Q&A questions. Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, you get tons of questions on Q&A Sunday. Yeah. And I'm sure that, you know, a good portion of them have listened to this, but if they have some, definitely send them in so that way it's not, because you can only answer, you know, five to eight on Q&A Sunday. Yeah, so for listeners who aren't aware, we, we do this thing at Cibolo Creek called Q&A Sundays where um, I answer questions live from the audience via a text messaging um, tool. And they can text their question, and then sometimes you've been the host of that. and I love being a host. You That's facilitate fun. the question that I'm going to answer, but we never get to even half of them because... We get a lot of questions, but we only have so much time, even between two services, but that's two different audiences. So yeah. I love Q&A Sundays because um, they they give me an insight of, you know, where people are thinking and what's of kind of up on their radar. And I always like addressing those kinds of topics for them. Be almost, I mean, I don't know anything about this, but having like two a year, especially since we're having, starting to do like longer series, yeah. It'd be interesting to do like one in the beginning or of the year and then one towards the end of the year. I know that there's all kinds of stuff that goes on on Sundays, but yeah, no, I think we have the flexibility to do that. And again, because I enjoy it so much and we get really great feedback about the experience. I think doing it at least twice a year would be a good service. Yeah. Even, even for those people who don't get their questions answered, at least shows, your willingness, but also just the church in general's willingness for questioning and, yep. um, you know, your response. And so I know a lot of people deal with feeling like they can't ask questions in church and all this stuff, or they come from a background. And so uh, us put it, making that a priority, I think, goes a long way with people. Yeah. And that was why we yeah created it, because that's been one of our values is Sybil is a place where you can have questions and you can ask them. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I guess we should get into our topic for today. Okay. While our, while our cameras are still working. <laughs> I, don't, I hope that they'll continue to work. Um, but today, uh, the last two episodes that released were um, what are demons and what are angels? Got some topics there, and I'm trying to chop them up into like more small, the smaller questions, like the guardian angel thing. I have like a clip of that that's going to release. There's probably going to be some people that disagree with um, our take on that, if I had to guess. Um, oh, you're taking responsibility. Us, our take on it. Well, I agreed. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. If it's ever just yours, I'll say just yours. But if it's ever mine, because I'm the one that says the like, you know, uh, not uh, not race, not race, but racier things, the things that are a little bit more um, <laughs> controversial. You know, controversial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> you don't disagree with me most of the time. You just don't say anything in, in else. But uh, but yeah, and so. We did demons and angels, and so now I figured it would be good um, to talk about heaven and right. what it would be like. Yeah. So. Where do you want to start? Um, I guess just to start at, uh, d does this topic have the same, um, I guess, uh, how you kind of want to place it like you did the others? Is it like, hey, this is... Um, this is not something that I'm necessarily trafficking in a whole bunch, or do you feel more confident about this topic? Uh, a little bit more familiar with this topic. Um, you tend tend to talk about it more than 
I find myself in conversations about uh, and angels so. and demons. Yeah. Same uh, with hell, I'm sure. A lot of people ask questions about heaven and hell. And so, again, I, I don't posit myself as an authority on any of them, but, um, yeah, a little bit more familiarity with that. Got it. Okay, so let's just start with this. Do we go to heaven right like right whenever we die or the next, like it will be actually the next time that we're there? Uh, my understanding is yes. Um, now, what does that mean, we? Because, you know, if you look at First Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul writes to the early church about the rapture, and it's, there's, you know, this, the conversation that people who have died as Christians, they will be resurrected or raised to meet the Lord in the air who's, now, who's coming into the, into the skies to receive the church. Um, so the, the inference is that while our bodies may go into the earth, the ground, our soul immediately proceeds to heaven, um, the presence of God, which is typically the equation. Heaven is the presence of God. And so my understanding is that if I were to you know, die this afternoon, my body would be buried in the ground and stay there until it is reunited with the, my soul, which my soul would immediately go to heaven upon my passing. Mm-hmm. Does our body, does our earthly body remain in the ground forever, or does it eventually get risen up again? Yeah, it's it, from both um, 1 Thessalonians 4, Revelation 20, we have clues to suggest that our physical body will then be reunited with our eternal soul and restored to something that um, resembles whatever God's intention is for our perfect heavenly bodies. Um, And so basically there'll be a reunion of soul and body into a completeness again. Yeah. It'd be a shame if like just your body came back however it was when it went in the ground. (laughs) (laughs) Both for old people, it's like, seriously, now I'm going to be stuck with these bad knees forever? That's actually, I think that's one of your questions in the discussion is, you know, what, what will we look like in heaven? Yeah. Um, I don't know for certain. There's, there's not a lot of information in the Bible about that particular dimension of the discussion, but I don't have a problem thinking that in heaven we will be like we were when we passed away. Now, some of us, some people, I, I talk, you know, the people I talk to, they go, well, I, they like to think in terms I'll be restored to this ideal of ideal age, ideal health, ideal maturity, whatever that is, well then, what is that? Um, And how much of that ideal age, ideal physical fitness, ideal maturity, how much of that is kind of a earthly construct that we decide, but not necessarily representative of how God looks at, you know, our life. And yeah. so um, I, I don't have a problem thinking in terms that I will experience heaven at the age in which I entered it. Because, like, what age would I go back to? How, well, and this How is, would that be decided? This is an outlier case to where it's like, it might just be an annoying question. Because um, I hate outlier cases. But... They should be taken in consideration, outlier cases. Um, it's like, well, babies. One is like, well, what happens to babies in general? But that's not what I'm asking. Babe, are they just always babies? So, like, they're always just having to be just crawling around? Well, that gets us into other questions about heaven is, you know, what what do we do there? Yeah, we're floating. Or um, no, I, I actually think all of the beautiful things about, the best things about earthly life will be, heaven Mm. so i think that the best things about earthly life is people at all different ages yeah infants bring joy to our life and elderly people bring 
a certain joy to our life. And so I, I think heaven's going to be a place where all of the best of society prevails and thrives. So it's not, it's not hard for me to imagine that, yeah, that baby, that infant who passes away on this earth, it's not hard for me to imagine that that's how they'll experience heaven. and Forever, though? Like, yeah. Do they ever grow up? No. Oh, dang. Again, who's to say? I mean, there's no clues to that. Sure, but, sure. <laughs> but, just be unfortunate. But, but think about it. If, if let's say, a two-week infant, two-week infant goes to heaven, what age does he go to? Well, I don't know. But <laughs> it would be hard for me to think that he just, like, never grows up. Well, that's the mystery of it all. Yeah, it would just be, okay, maybe not even hard. It would be unfortunate just because, like, that oh, person so, never, like, comes into realization, I guess. I don't know. Unless that's so just how what they were you're meant. imagining that if they go to heaven as an infant, that they would then continue their growth. Oh, I would hope so. Now, I, it, I don't okay. know. Okay, but but uh, out on the other end, then let's take a you know a senior. Do they just keep getting older and older? Well, and that's older? the thing. You would hope that that senior would get younger. You would hope, not like he actually gets younger. This is I probably <laughs> most people probably I, I guess I'm hoping. I can't even say that. As of right now, <laughs> I would hope for, um, kind of like an idealized age to where. Um, the complications of one's age no longer inflicts them. Oh, I don't think the complications will inflict them in heaven. Babies don't know that they have complications. Yeah. So. But I don't think an older person who has, you know, arthritis or, you know, some other physical ailment related to aging, it's not hard for me to imagine that they'll still be the same age, but without the ailment. Oh, okay. They'll just look, they'll just kind of look old, but not. Yeah. That, you know, they can what run you're the describing, as the way I hear what you're describing, is we all come back to some middle. So are we all the same age in heaven? Okay, hang on now. <laughs> I, you, you're pressing. We also are talking about how our souls just go up to heaven. So that alone is like, you know, as far as logic goes, a jump. So it's not, it's well, not that much crazier to think, well, okay. maybe we go to a different okay. idealized time. We're going to an idealized yeah, place. Yeah, but our, the difference there is our soul is a timeless sure. part of us. So it's not affected by age. Correct. Our body is. Yes. Okay. So then the question is, in the restoration of our body when we reunited with our soul in heaven, is there some sort of a change in our body? So, for older, so if, if you, you're describing, like, you know, the old guy who can no longer walk, can walk, which I agree would be the case, um, that doesn't so much as, as I guess, um, seem odd to me as someone staying um, basically unconscious for all eternity. Babies are conscious in that, like, I'm tired and I want food. Other than that, they just... Yeah, but are they going to be tired in heaven? And are they going to be hungry? I doubt it. But I guess they just, I guess, I guess what we know of babies where like they're kind of cute to look at and uh, they cry, they would just be cute to look at. And enjoy. Sure. But do they even have like their relationship with their mother at that point? Do they have a, well, that's a whole other question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah, whole other yeah, question. Right? Okay. Do we okay. know, do we know each other in heaven the same way that we know each other on earth? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, again, clues. But uh, no, it's, it's interesting how you look at it and how I look at it. it just it's not right or wrong because well, there, there isn't information for us to be sure. dogmatic or precise about it. So then I, where I am is I'm free to have the discussion and entertain all sorts of different explanations. Well, in like an old body, that is rejuvenated to a place of being able to, you know, it's no longer afflicted with the same things that it was afflicted here. Right. That's like, other than, you know, some gray hairs and maybe some wrinkles is hardly no, any different than d just changing to an idealized state. Cause that's all I meant. I just meant 
it's no longer afflicted by yeah. the things that it was before. So baby is just a weird scenario because they never reached that time. You right. don't want to go backwards because that's even worse. Yeah. You know, I, I years ago, I can't remember where I read this or when, but I read in a book and the question was, is somebody who's mentally handicapped You're born with Down syndrome. Sure. Do they have Downs in heaven? And I thought the author's treatment of it was very fascinating. And he said, essentially, Down syndrome is simply um, viewed a certain way on earth because of our sin nature. Meaning we look at Downs a certain way because of how we view health or success or intelligence. But that doesn't exist in heaven. And if the God who created them created them with Downs, why would he do that differently in heaven? And it, it just it just blew apart my categories of how we will see each other and how we will treat each other in heaven. Because, again, I, I, want, I don't want to say the wrong thing here. On earth, downs can be perceived as a problem. It's definitely outside of the norm. Right. Something didn't work the way that it worked okay. normally. Okay. But in heaven, will we see it the same way, is what the author was saying. And I just thought, well, that's really question. interesting. Um, like I said, it just kind of rattled categories of how I would have thought about that issue. I have a take. My take is God. it's clear that God has created our bodies to function in a certain way. Now, because of the broken world, sin is corrupted everything so that way that means that even like biological um sure dysfunctions can occur or malfunctions and um i guess i would i would guess that in heaven everything would work exactly as god intended it to work yeah and rather and, than a deformity staying on as a deformity right. and i'm good with that too but it is it is it is a question it is a valid question yeah but Okay, well, let's wrangle this in some. What? Okay, so we die, we get there. What is there any? Uh, what in the scriptures tells us anything about what heaven will look like? What heaven will look like? Yeah. So thinking about this, um, the Bible is not an an encyclopedia. Sure. It's not like as much as it would be really helpful at times, and some people would like it to be. You can't just open your Bible and go look up heaven under H, and then here's this exhaustive explanation of all things heaven, not the way the Bible was written. So I've always looked at the Bible as a puzzle. And what you do is, from Old Testament to New Testament, you collect pieces of a puzzle. And you use all the rules for properly interpreting the Scriptures hermeneutics, exegesis, you use, you use the right rules of how you handle Old Testament, how you handle New Testament, how you handle different genres. Use all the right rules, and you get together pieces. So if you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you can put together some pieces of the puzzle of what heaven is like. And so here's how my mind works. I'm not saying this is how everybody's mind works when it comes to the topic of heaven. I go, where in the Bible do I have any explanation of something that God creates that's perfect? Mm -hmm. So in Genesis, I have the Garden of Eden. And in Revelation, I have the city of God. And those are, I'm not saying there aren't others, but those are the two big places where we get some sort of a look at when God creates. So, if God has created heaven, then it's not hard for me to imagine that heaven is essentially a beautiful, garden-like city. I just bring those together. Yeah. 
the two places in the Bible where things are perfect. So imagine the most lush, gorgeous, beautiful, amazing garden-like environment. Think national forest. Mm -hmm. And then think of a city without all of the, the downside, the negative, the brokenness of urban life. So a busy, a busy, bustling, vibrant, dynamic, urban place where people dwell. Nobody's pooping on the sidewalks. <laughs> or shooting up on the... <laughs> yeah, all of that <laughs> stuff doesn't exist because what? Heaven's perfect. It's the place of God. Sure. So imagine all of the best things about this dynamic, vibrant life of community in this absolutely gorgeous setting. That's... To me, in my mind, that's heaven. Yeah. Um, again, heard somebody else say this years ago, and it has always stuck with me. They they talked about why are the streets in heaven paved with gold, which is an indication from something we read in the book of Revelation. So the streets are paved with gold. And I loved it. This author said, well, the reason that the streets are paved with gold is because gold has no value. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, yeah, we just walk on it. And have yeah, it. It, it just, it doesn't have the earthly value. It's just a beautiful part of the work yeah, I was of gonna God. Say, and it, it does, but it does have beauty. It might not yes. be valuable like that we see it now, but it does Yeah, have we beauty. see it as a, a power thing, or so we yeah, see it as wealth, a prosperity, right. privilege thing. But in heaven, it, no, it's just gold. It's something God created, and it's has no social worth, if you will, in some sort of economic s sense. So we just we just pave the streets with it because heaven's beautiful and heaven's amazing. Yeah. And, and um, so that's what I imagine heaven to be like. And um, because I think that both Old and New Testament are essentially portraying God's love for the community of humans that we will have this heavenly community of all those who place their trust in christ living together for an eternity of all walks of life of all different races and ages and uh beliefs uh theological beliefs all based around a, a faith in jesus christ of course but um so um, I just imagine everything that's good about this life will be perfect in the next. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Because I, I, a lot of people think that heaven's going to be so much... It will be so much different, but it won't, it, it won't be so... Um, it's not like we're going to be floating around in clouds. No. I don't think that's going to be like floating around in clouds. I don't think it's going to be... That we aren't going to be able to understand the environment that we're in. No, um, I... It's the city of God. It'll be a bustling, a bustling may be a earthbound term, because I don't mean it in the stress, anxiety, busy kind of way. I just think it'll be vibrant, dynamic community of people. Um, again, another clue, when you look at Genesis, God creates human beings uh, before the fall happens, what is what is his instructions? Basically, three things: work, relate, and rest. Yeah, that's God's design for human beings. So, I imagine heaven will be a place where we work, it'll be a place where we relate, and it'll be a place where we rest. And we're not resting out of a sense of exhaustion because we won't be tired. We'll be resting out of a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction sabbath in its truest sense of the word okay so that that kind of takes care of like what we do so we will have roles and responsibility um a lot of people think that we just sit there and like sing songs of praise the entire time right and i'm like well i don't know i mean as you kind of pointed out eden was where humanity started where god was you know dwelling amongst us and that wasn't what was going on there yeah no so yeah, what I'm trying to avoid is getting locked into just a passage of Scripture. And so you look at Revelation, and there are a number of occasions where we see the saints of heaven circled around the throne of God, worshiping him, giving him 
all the worship that he deserves. Yes, we will do that. Sure. I think we will do other things, and he won't be the least bit threatened. His feelings won't get be hurt that we're not standing around him singing, because all that we will do in heaven will be to his glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of the times whenever we, whenever we think of worshiping God, we only throw it into the singing and playing music yeah. route. That's just the worship, the way that we see worship. Yeah, so when God created the world and it was perfect, work was a part of his design, being industrious, being um, fruitful, being um, productive. Did I already say productive? But kind of making contribution. Yeah. So I think in heaven, while I can't tell you what the jobs will be, I think we'll have roles to play and functions to fulfill and we'll go about doing that in all of the very best noble ways that people who have been transformed can do it. So will we have families or more pointedly, will we be married in heaven? Yeah. Again, not a lot of clues about that one clue from the gospels that seems to suggest we will not be married. Um, because I think this this is how I sort of satisfy that part of God's design is we will all be the bride of Christ the groom. So the whole society will function in a kind of marital um, relationship with the king, our savior. Um, so... Will we recognize each other? I don't know. Um, but th- there's nothing wrong about that. So I can't imagine that it would be wrong in heaven that you and I will recognize each other and maybe even celebrate the fact that while on earth we were friends and we served together and we will maybe appreciate and celebrate the journey that we shared together and then this beautiful reality, we're here. We made it. Uh, there's, there's all these memes. Uh, it's using a, it's using a part from The Office where Michael and Dwight think that they like saved the branch from closing, and they're just, and Michael's just going, "Yes, we did it!" And Dwight's like, "We did it!" And, and all the meme is like, whenever you get to heaven and you see your boys at the gate, and it's just like, "We did it! <laughs> we did it!" Um, That'd be great. I think that would be like it'd be a very much of a homecoming feel. Yeah, and so what's wrong with that? I mean, nothing, nothing, right? So I go, why, why can't it be um, this blessed reunion of the folks that we were in love with and enjoyed and knew and thought of as friends or brothers and sisters in Christ? What, why wouldn't that be just an absolutely beautiful experience of our heavenly arrival? Well, too, and I think that you know, I think that we will be. Um, judged for how we stewarded that which was put into our care. Yes. And so, like, husbands, well, that's your family. And wives, and I mean, that's your husband also, but in, in your care, you know, your kids. Um, but also, like, friendships. Like, I think they're going to be judged with how we, you know, sure. who are friendships. And so it's like, <laughs> once we get up there, we don't even remember any of this. In the, in the other case, <laughs> be like, what am I being judged for? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even know who that guy is. Who's Allie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, see that to me, that's great insight. That's yeah. that's a great kind of um, that's a great rolling out of a logic that says, yeah, how how could we even be evaluated as stewards on earth if we forget it all or are unaware of it all because we're now in heaven? I I, I don't think I don't think we will. Um, when you think about salvation and being saved. And when you think about the beauty of, you know, sanctification, we're now in this state of like what's theologically referred to as progressive. You know, we're becoming sanctified. The sanctification has been secured through the work of Christ and our faith in him. But we live in the realities of the tension and the pull, the drag of sin. But God's at work sanctifying us and then in heaven the sanctification is made complete 
Yeah, there's like three phases, right? I yeah, think. so we have this this fulfillment of all that sanctification was intended to accomplish. So why not have an awareness of you and I being able to say, look how far we've come. We made it. It's it's all done now and all that we struggled with and all that we, you know, worked toward and against, um, it's it's all panned out. It's all paid off in a sense. And so I, I think that's a beautiful way to think about some of that joy and some of that celebration that heaven will be. Yeah, I think that, you know, Paul says keep running the race or, you know, fighting yeah. a good fight, keep running the race of, what was it? Was it salvation? Running the race of something. But anyways, like, crossing the finish line is so much sweeter if, like, you can remember and you, you know the race that you ran. Yeah. And so, yeah, 100%. I, I, I don't think that our minds going to be wiped. That would be unfortunate. No. no. I don't know why that would even be necessary. No. No. Okay, but so we have indication that marriage probably doesn't exist. I think maybe some type of bond, though, does. I mean, like, though in the Gospels there, it, it seems to say not. You know, Eden, we were given a, a partner. So, I mean, that was an idealized yeah. sure. situation. Yeah, again, that's that's why I wouldn't be dogmatic about that, just because you do have clues that you have to piece together and a statement in the Gospels where Jesus says we won't be married. Then you have the design of the garden where we are given a partner in marriage. Um, so I could go either way on. I just know that in the perfection that is heaven because of the presence of God, yeah, we won't be resisting or fighting whatever that design no, no, is. No. It would, it, if we were married, it would make housing a lot easier to figure out. Um, or, or maybe it's, you know, maybe it's, while Charlotte and I aren't united in marriage in heaven in the way that we are on earth, maybe part of that bond that we share in heaven is just the appreciation of how we knew and understood and each other on earth. Yeah. And celebrating, again, the fulfillment of all God's promises on our behalf. Yeah. It does make it odd, though, because I mean, you think about Granted, you can't even think about this because it doesn't make any sense. When you think about time, it's like we're only really married for a blip yeah. in our existence. But yeah, that's I mean, that's true of everything. You can live to be a hundred and it's still a blip compared to eternity. Yeah. When you can't allow that perspective to make things seem small here. Right. Because this is where <laughs> If th- though this time is short, this is basically you know the deciding place of where you're going. Yeah, this is everything. It. Yeah, as it relates to what your experience in eternity will be. Yes, indeed. Okay, so here's another odd one that is can only really be well, not really speculative, but can we can can we sin in heaven? That's a really good question, and so I'm going to give you my best answer on the pieces of the puzzle that you put together. So Satan and demons, they once lived in heaven as creations of God. And yet Satan made a choice of pride, of envy, of covetousness, and he was able to lead or influence a host of other angels to share that with him and then fallen from heaven. Now that's, so I have that puzzle piece. I can't necessarily build an entire theology on that one piece because I have other puzzle pieces that suggest, you know, a redemptive transformation of my heart and my mind or my mind and my soul, uh, in heaven. Um, Statements like we will be like Christ, we will not like Christ in divinity, but like Christ in our capacity to understand the nature of faith and sin and obedience and all that. So it's a good question. I don't know what the answer would be uh, specifically other than I don't know what the alternative is. Because if our, if our salvation is eternal and we can't lose it, 
then I don't know that I have the capacity in heaven to make some kind of a sinful choice which would um, disqualify me from heaven. Does that make sense? Well, you can't even make that choice now, assuming that you've received salvation, but you can still sin. I, yeah, I can still sin, but I can't disqualify myself yeah. from heaven. Oh, I see what you're saying. So in heaven, would it be the same way? Um ah. That's a good question. I want to say no because I feel like we can't, God can't have that in His presence. But I mean, all, but Holy Spirit's already in me. Yeah. So it's like obviously He's been like Jesus's blood was sufficient enough to make it to where now He can dwell in me. Yeah. So about the only thing that I'm betting on is you know new heart, new mind. Yeah. Transform truly salvation in all of its entirety is now complete. That would be the redemption or the the redeeming of all that was broken and um, separated from God is now restored. So, yeah, I want to say no, but some of the things that you're raising certainly are um, interesting to think about. And, and if that's possible, then I'd say it this way. If heaven's perfect, it's a perfect community of all that God wanted, then if I'm capable, again, neither of us are saying we are, but if we are capable of sin in heaven, then everything that's true about relational forgiveness and restoration is available and works. Yeah, and I would say probably the consequences of sin are definitely not the same, possibly non-existent. Yes. Like I don't think that I can murder in heaven, you know what I'm saying? No. You, um you wouldn't have you wouldn't have the heart no to do that. Um yeah, cuz I mean like the only reason that I want to say no cuz it doesn't make sense. But also it makes sense because well, this entire thing this entire thing went sideways in the first place because God wanted us to freely choose him. And then obviously uh that existence necessitated another solution to the problem of, okay, well, they have to be able, they have to be able to sin, and whenever they inevitably do, I also still want to be around them, which is Christ. Right. And so, because um, like he doesn't want robots, or else he would have just created us as robots. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the way we've always, and I agree with it. That's the way we've always described um, our relationship with Christ is it's a choice that we make in faith. And um, because we're not robots. And I don't think in heaven we become robots. Yeah, no. So what is the choice? And maybe the, the way to answer that is because our hearts have been transformed. That, or I'm saying, you know, that sin nature has been redeemed, has been transformed that we we aren't, we aren't even capable of making choices contrary to God's will or design. Yeah. Yeah, I probably agree. Yeah, like the desire just isn't even there. Especially when, like how you've described sin as a coping mechanism, well, now we have no reason to cope. Yeah, because all of our needs are fulfilled. Exactly. In Christ. Which makes you really then question what Satan's deal was. It's like, how can you exist that long in the presence of God and still be like, hmm. Yeah. I think I think myself better. <laughs> How prideful and blind do you have to be to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Lot I mean those are all really good questions that kind of spool out the thinking in all sorts of interesting ways. My guess is just so much more complicated than that because it's like like you've said it's not an encyclopedia and the short story that we have of that entire scenario the small snippet that we have is just so it yeah. feels so incomplete. And it's like, yeah, my guess is just so much more complicated. And my guess is that Satan was probably given enough chances to turn his way around. Um, yeah. If I had to guess, in line with God's character shown throughout. But who knows? Maybe the angels have a little bit harsher uh, judgment. Yeah. Um, okay, here's one that gets people riled up. <clears throat> not sin or what we're going to look like or marriage in heaven, which seem way more important. But here's one that really get people riled up. Will our animals who die on earth be in heaven? 
You want to know one of my favorite things to do that makes me think I'm a psychopath? Oh, is that a thing? You like to do things that make you think you're a psychopath? psychopath. (laughs) But I don't pull punches whenever, like, younger people ask me, is there, there, like, pets going to be in heaven? You know, pull punches. Well, you know, one time we got this question on a QA and a Sunday. Someone asked me, will there be pets in heaven? And it was just a golden moment. I... I acted real pensive, real thoughtful, I was rubbing my chin. I was like, well, if I understand the Bible correctly, I mean, like doing this all in kind of this seriousness. I said, well, if I understand the Bible correctly, dogs, yes, cats, no. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Apollo, right? Because everybody knows that I have this thing about cats, uh-huh. which is mis- a misunderstanding of something I said in a message a long time ago. So I get rest. You're just a it. dog person. I love dogs. I'm a big fan of dogs. I love cats. I probably wouldn't have a Especially cat. Apollo, who you might yeah. be able to see in the background from time to time. Yes. Apollo's awesome. And I've met a lot of other awesome cats, but I am a big fan of all things dogs. So um, here's the only clue that you have to that sort of thing. Maybe two clues is that God created animals and he made them part of that garden that was perfect. So would not all of the things that God created be a part of this beautiful garden-like city? Um, Secondly, we have the image of Again, this may just be imagery, but we have the image of the lion and the lamb, you know, laying down together. And it's the imagery of peace and harmony and no fear and no danger. But could that imagery also give some sort of a puzzle piece to an understanding that, yes, heaven will be inhabited by animals and the beautiful creations that they are, um, what function they'll play, I don't know. Um, will I have a dog in heaven? I probably won't need one in the same way that we might you know, long for that experience on earth. But I can't say dogmatically yes, but it's not hard for me to imagine that as created creatures that had design and purpose when God created the garden, that heaven could also be that. So I guess there's a couple of ways that this question need to be chopped up. Uh, So I believe that there will be animals in heaven because they are part of the blessing that is life here, so there's no reason to think that there wouldn't be part of the blessing that it would be heaven. Okay. I guess here's another question, a way to look at this is, do you, okay, because the question I asked was, do I think, for example, our cat Apollo, do I think Apollo, do you think Apollo is going to be in heaven? The question I'm really asking is, does my cat have a soul? No. Okay. So I think there'll be animals in heaven too, but it's not going to be their soul goes to heaven when they die. No. Now, Apollo might be in heaven because God is great and can do all things, yeah. but it's not that whenever your pet passes away, yeah. a little hamster soul goes up to heaven. <laughs> a little hamster soul imagine it was floating up <laughs> no i i don't believe that yes so you and i would agree on that so would apollo the cat that i know be in heaven yes. as some eternal you know soul <laughs> that would be a stretch my wife is in the other room and can hear this and it's probably very choking yeah up. she maybe for the first time ever may run out here yeah very upset the podcast. <laughs> um no, I, I couldn't point to any clues that would indicate that to be true. But, And I probably would go so far as to say they won't be pets. Free range. Yeah, so like this, whatever mansion I'm going to inherit in uh-huh. heaven, I probably won't have. Storing a lot of treasures down there, huh? My, Quite presumptuous. My three um, golden retrievers, you know basking in the sunlight with me. That's an American dog right there. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to agree. As much as I would like that. It's like, but then it it also feels awkward, though, because it's like, 
well, all my dogs are here. And you know how it's weird it's where you almost kind of get this feeling like you're cheating on your pet whenever it starts to get old. <laughs> and then you get a new puppy. No, because I've never had more than one pet. <laughs> I don't know. Is okay. that a feeling? It's something that, yeah, Multiple it's like, wow, well, all of you are have? here. Now what do I do? It's like if you get, okay, think about this. You're married to two people, and marriage does exist in heaven. Now both of your husbands or, or your wives just show up? Yeah. What? And somehow that would all be restored and redeemed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be weird, maybe. Um yeah. Wow. This 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 little snippet of conversation just provided an enormous glimpse into your fascinating mind. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But yeah, and plus I just don't think that like all the animals, it'd be just be too many. Too much going on. Be too full of a house. It's like everybody's cows are gonna be in heaven. You know how many freaking cows are gonna be there? That's just one type of animal. <laughs> No, I don't think animals are eternal in the way that humans are. Nor do I. I don't know why I'm getting riled up about this. Man, you are. You kind I'm of treating you like you're disagreeing up. with me. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's like, why? He like, didn't why? Say, I think the day animals have cool souls. Cool down. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, man. <laughs> it's maybe one of the most well, interesting conversations we've had. Definitely, definitely an interesting one. <laughs> definitely, hopefully, somewhat insightful into how we reached our conclusions. <laughs> They're like, man, those two guys are weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, the uh, no the, uh, people who don't know us at all that li- that listen to us on the internet, we've gotten no negative remarks, um, only positive ones. Because like the the one that we did about um, Satan. Got a bunch of like views from people who uh, just found the video because it's it was oh. a commonly asked question on YouTube. Oh yeah, and um, no, people were very positive about it. It's that it was a good conversation. Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny. I was going to tell you earlier when you brought it up. You know, you're doing a a good job at creating reels, mm-hmm. little snippets of my messages from Sunday mornings, and. Um, they show up in my feed, and I'm not expecting them. That's probably weird. It is really weird. I'm like, hey, what? Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm always like, what? What is? What part of the message is he highlighting? And it's weird because I see those reels from other people that I might follow as teachers, and I stop and listen to what they. Ha- and then I'm like, wow, that's me. It's just kind of a new experience yeah yeah i don't like uh, whenever i was chopping up my own that i actually didn't feel so bad listening to myself and you listen to yourself every sunday or you know every every single time after you talk but then it's even i don't know it's almost like a feeling of trying not to be narcissistic whenever it's like you're chopping up your own (laughs) not only are you listening to it but you're also chopping it up and then posting it to church's social media that you run and so i was like yeah yeah, I'm glad it's you doing it. That way it's not me determining yeah. anything about that, how it's used or presented. and um, It's just odd seeing yourself on social media, internet, that um, you just uh, never imagined that. Well, and I'll post, like, quotes of you, too. So, like, I just posted one. You're talking about how we've misled this generation. Yeah, yeah. And uh, people, people like that one, and it got a couple of shares. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you just have to hope that I, like, <laughs> I choose the one thing that you're like, oh man, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't think you would. But what was kind of cool is I saw the one you posted about the we've misled a generation and a, a generation needs to understand. And then, like five days later, in another reel from another church another teacher um he was a say, he was saying essentially the same thing about how we've he was talking about like this easy believism where you yeah, just yeah, have yeah. to cheap grace kind of thing yeah cheap grace that was exactly the conversation he was having and uh, i was like oh okay this validation that i wasn't completely off my rocker to make that observation and have that perspective yeah yeah, because I listen to a bunch of other things too, and a lot of different speakers and stuff. So, if you ever if you ever off your rocker, I'll be the first to let you know. 
You can trust. I'll be like, the heck was this? What are you talking about? Uh, Well, today has been an interesting conversation. It has. It's been good. It's been good. I'm sure that we'll record some more during our downtime. But um, I just pulled an article off that you sent me that I haven't read yet that I'm looking forward to reading about. The death of church and pub. Yes. Okay, if you don't have a subscription to First Things... Uh, which is where that came where from. Where that came from. Um, you should get it. There's a lot of great writers on there. It's a good oh, mix of like Protestants. Multiple and, writers? Mm-hmm. It's not all just it's one. It's a publication. So it's a magazine. Oh, okay. Uh, but it has also like you can, the web edition. Yeah. Um, I just skimmed it really quickly and, I'm, and I knew where you were coming from because I know that's a thing that's kind of you're passionate about and I share the same similar passion. It's just this idea of how we live in community with each other and what is happening to our society that's robbing us of those rich experiences that we see in what used to be a pub as a gathering place yeah. and a, and a connecting church as a gathering place, place and yeah. the church as a gathering place and a connecting place, which is where I'm headed this Sunday with my, mm. my message talking about um, the place of community in our lives. And, um, so I'm looking forward to reading that in a little bit more depth. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he challenges the readers at the end. It's like, or the, I guess the church, it's like, okay, well now you, now we know, we kind of understand what the problem is. Now the church has to figure out how, um, what solutions, how can it now become the part of the computer? How can it be a place of community, uh, in the world that we live in today? Yeah. And my initial thoughts about, again, I haven't read it in detail, but reading it just kind of, perusing it my thought was so if we know it's an issue in our society that community and connectedness is threat is being threatened um then how hard will the church fight for it rather than cater to it and that's a little bit of my resistance to all the work that i'm seeing being done connecting with your online audience now yeah i could appreciate people's circumstances and how an online experience can be, you know, a benefit or can be a resource. But when it becomes the substitute for the living, breathing community of Christians who gather together, I, th- I always say, well, I must be old school because I'm not good with it yet. But I'm not even really sure I should get good with it. The, the, the guy that I love, Nathan Finocchio, he was like, password protect it. Mm-hmm. He's like, so that way people have to reach out to you and be like, hey, I'm not going to be here or, oh. or whatever, you know, or don't do it until after. Yeah. And so he's like, don't allow it to be this thing that even the people who are out of state, which I love people out of state, like to watch us. Mm-hmm. Um, but and they can do that, but not in as a substitute, like you said, as them finding a local church and being part of the community yeah. there. Yeah, I had, uh, I was talking to, I've been doing this elective at church, and I had one of the students, um, she was telling me that her husband watches every week, but he never comes to our services, like on campus, and they live 10 minutes from the church, and she was trying to explain why he thinks that that's okay. And I, I'm, again, we're we're in this like kind of post COVID era where um, we're not supposed to be critical of that. Mm-hmm. People have just, you know, people need something different, so they're experiencing it online. And I, I'm, again, it may be old school naivete, but I'm like, no, there is something uniquely dynamic about Christians gathered together in a place sharing expressions of worship that i believe is part of god's design and a society that in a culture that seeks to rob us of that pull people away from that i think is ultimately um, a work of evil because it ends up isolating us yep and insulating us from uh what is provided by the community. So, well, and something uh, that nobody ever talks about, it's like one of the pros of being part of a church is that you're in a community 
that you know it's protected literally by a boundary where you know the people inside of this place, place not being so literal, um, share the same values as you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's incredibly important. And I know that we have, like, I know that there has to be some, like, you know, let's not be, um, <clears throat> let's not completely disregard people who might think differently than us, but, like, People need to play because everyone has to watch out everywhere else they go because it's complete madhouse everywhere else. There needs to be a place that they can be, it's, you know, a home, a yeah. church, a community. Where it's like these a people, family. these people are all shooting towards the same thing. They're, you know, we're all falling down, we're all messing up. We have questions and all this stuff, but it's like that's so important. And 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 churches in uh, they are catering to the rest of the culture, and because of that, now the church capital C, a lot of places the church on isn't even that, you know? And so yeah. that's just incredibly unfortunate. Yeah. I'm very passionate about that. I can rant about it for a long time. <laughs> uh, you're not <laughs> ranting. If it, it, you're not ranting about it. Um, you're speaking into it with the passion that's in your heart about it. And I think that's all a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good stuff. Enjoyed it. Yes. As usual. Thank you, sir. Thanks for putting up my crazy things, <laughs> uh, as I always spout out. But uh, we'll see you, buddy, next time. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of Cibolo Creek Community Church. If you did, please consider supporting the ministry of our church. Your donations make a difference. To check out more resources or to share a gift, please visit us at CibeloCreek.com. Thanks for listening.